Come on, come here and give God a hand praise on this morning. Come on, somebody shout with the voice of and confession because we are seeking God by our giving today. We have God's promise. We shall not want any good thing. No lack for those who seek the Lord. Sometimes even the strongest of this world experience lack. Not so with the righteous. God promises that those who seek him will not lack any good thing. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. We seek the Lord through giving as we give of our finances to the Lord trusting him to supply more through our giving than we would have otherwise had. Our giving is an ex exercise of faith in the Father's ability and promise to supply our needs. So on this morning, if you are paying electronically using Givelify or the church website, please proceed to complete your giving.
Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would bless those that gave and those that wanted to give right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask that you would multiply this offering 100 times over for the work of the ministry to the greater good of the kingdom. We thank you. We give you all the honor and glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and give glory to God this morning. He's worthy to be praised this morning. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just hear that hymn this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Anybody know that? Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on to me. Has God been faithful to anybody? <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh.
the spirit of willingness and joy in what you're going in victory.
that stuff for yourself. Oh, Lord, help me, God. An uh, excellent nurse and an excellent teacher, they give everything they yeah. have yeah. and what they're doing. Yeah. Don't even be everywhere. Because what I look like trying to be my everything as a nurse, kill somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my position, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Help me, God. Yeah. I say, I'm good. Yeah. And I saw him, I said, you go sit there and I'm going to give you some math things. And I, we were doing the fractions and decimals, which I love. Principal, come, they greeted her, did, went to the board, because I do math, I try to do the hardest. When I do the hardest thing, it's not for my kids, it's for me. I have to challenge myself. I have to know what I'm at a deficit. Do anybody hear me? You got to catch your mess folks up. I mess up those students, and I underserve them if I'm afraid of math and can't give them exposure to the math that they need to have. And then they'll be, come on, they'll be labeled. And they'll take the test and they'll say, because, I, because I'm afraid of man. But if I know that's my deficit, that's what I did. I put myself out there and I made and I went to workshops. Come on. I got different kinds of books on different levels to teach me so I can teach them. And so he went. I was, I was teaching math, and we got uh, uh, the So we got to, they did the improv, all that, all that, all that, all that. We talked about the whole, we made the little things, you know, we did all yeah. everything that she was looking for. They got stuck on equivalents. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I had a little clicker, because I went to Boston for my last day, Boston, they taught us some things. And I had a little something to signal them. They were stuck. And by the way, my career was a very, very high achieving class. Because I was always in the magnet school. So they're very high achieving. So, so they couldn't get it. I said, come on, you know, I'm priming. Give them a chance. Give them a chance. Don't just knock them away. Give them a chance. Come on. So they sit there striving. Guess who gets up on the computer? He's not even with the group. Because he's there. So guess who gets up on the computer? Walks up to my little Ronnie, my little dirty baby. Walks over to the board and gives the answer to everybody like. I say, cop everybody. Do you understand? Do you understand leadership? Do you understand giving of yourself? Hallelujah. And not building yourself up. I had to evaluate. I, I was afraid of math. Excellent and everything, but I had to face it. Because if I'm going to be before these babies and these children and affect their lives, I had to learn something. Oh, she not, ain't got nothing to do with me being nice. Ain't got nothing to do with me being cute. You know, I, I ain't got to do it. I am cute. I got to do it. You raise your hand if you try to be ugly. I don't think so. Everybody, everybody is cute because everybody ain't trying to be ugly. Right? You got to give your all because you are affecting generations. I don't know where he's at, but I don't want to believe he hasn't forgotten. I want to believe that he had another little one, but I don't even go there with that little one. But I'm saying, when you're in ministry, especially with your people's souls, it cannot be for some motivation about you. You got to give it all as a leader. I give all that I have. I cannot ask you for your permission. I cannot preach what you want me to preach. I will not say what you want me to say. And I will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because I love you. And I will tell you the truth. And I will help you along the way. But you got to do this. Tell your name, say, neighbor. You've got to do this because can't nobody do it for you. You got to know when you need some help. Yeah. That number pride, we need to do that. But I'm going to get to my message today. But that's what we talked about last week. We talked about God knows who I am. I mean, I remember. We talked about God, Yada, even. I mean, God knows, Yada. It don't mean that he sees you, but your eyes. He said, I know everything about you. 
I know your uprising. I know your dark spirit. <laughs> I know what you get ready to say, even though the words is on your tongue, and I know why you're doing it. Yeah. Oh, help me, God. I know the intentions. I know what you mean to say, but God said, I know what you meant to say. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I didn't mean to do that, but God know what you meant to do. And that's what counts, you see, because we're on our way to heaven, aren't we? Yeah. I said, aren't we on our way to heaven? Yeah. Aren't we trying to get this video? This is not about you. Right. Right. Yeah. God knows who I am. Mark 10, 46. Galatians 6 to 9, we talked about that. And he let us know last week, hallelujah, that he knows us. And Isaiah, he says, I know your name. He said, I claim you as my own. <laughs> so he says in Isaiah 41, fear not. For I have redeemed you. And I have called you by name. You are mine. Somebody said, ooh, I feel special. Well, let me tell you something. There's a responsibility to come in. You can feel special all you want, but you belong to God. You don't do what God tells you. You don't go what God tells you. Y'all don't want me this morning. Ooh, I feel special. Well, you got to do what God said. And if you're his, then that means you don't belong to yourself. Amen. Then that means you're going to do what God said in his world. Amen. And you're going to do it God's way. Amen. If God said your conversations are be holy, you're not supposed to be having folk from lunch and dinner. Amen. What in your mouth? Amen. Oh, Lord, hell, y'all know you got to tell Well, these are my praying people right now. Amen. But I think I lost. Michelle, what you come from? Get the girls back. Get <laughs> some prayer up here. Come on, somebody. Come on. You know, I'm going to talk about that. And it's going to be, I'm going to do some little some lessons on that. But not today. We talked about in Galatians 6 and 9. He's told us not to be co adzol Tell you, say, neighbor. Don't be co adzol don't be weary. Don't be weary. Don't become weary. That's what it means to become weary. Don't become weary when you're doing something well. When you're doing something in the will of God. Can I talk to y'all? I'm trying to get to the other, but I'm going to need you here because some of y'all weren't here, so you don't know where I'm going in the next one. Say, say, hey. Are you listening? Are you listening? Say, don't. Be coaxial. Don't become weary in doing the will of God. <laughs> now, doing well doesn't mean because you hit your friend up. Doesn't mean that you do everything you and your friend got going on, and whatever your friend do, you do it. And whatever they say is right with you. Shout out to me. That's not the well doing I'm talking about. <laughs> it's talking about in doing the will of God. <laughs> I actually said, Pastor, what does that mean? That means doing the right thing the right way according to what God says. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So don't get weary. Why? Because there is a weariness that comes when you're doing well. Shout hallelujah. There is a weariness that comes. He said, but I don't want you. He wasn't saying they were weary. He said, but I don't want you to become. Y'all not helping me. He said, because when you do well, the enemy's going to fight you. Yeah. Show me when you're talking about you doing the work of the Lord. Let me tell you, y'all will stop all this crybaby stuff yeah. about what the devil is doing to y'all. I was thinking the devil is doing to y'all. Y'all, the devil ain't got nothing to do with you doing it to yourself. You read us some stuff that you put in the world and just come back up. Take it patiently and keep it moving. Shout out to you. There's not many of us being persecuted for the will of God. There's not many of us, hallelujah, that's being put down because of the will of God. Shout out to you. God still found it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So don't become weary. What do you mean, don't grow weary? It, it, it don't become. It, Paul, uh, he's talking to them. I'm not saying you are. Paul said, but I know what this entails. I know what it is when you're giving your life to the ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and 
And when you resolve that you will walk with God no matter what. He said, I know what that means, Galatians. He said, I know he talked to me. He said, I don't want to be letting walk fool you. Who has bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth. He said, y'all having some problems because you've been into companies and listen to stuff you ain't had no business listening to because you thought you were strong enough to do it and you weren't. Help me now. He said, but I want to talk to you. I don't want you to be with me. Be the rich, who has bewitched you that you're not obeying the truth? Paul said it had to be a witch. It had to be somebody. It had to be something stupid. It had to be the devil himself. For you not to obey the word of God. For you to overlook what's right. It had to be. Come on. Come on. It had to be the enemy. Who, who bewitched you? Who got your attention? Who told you you was that good? Who's, oh, who's stroking you? Who's flattering you? Yeah. Because that's a sin. Yeah. When you flatter folks, you got, you got ulterior motives. Yeah. Walking down the street. <laughs> don't tell you that, don't take it personally. This dude is whistling, everybody come by. Amen. He didn't get Amen. his car that day to come by and call you, he was going to come by and whistle that shit. Hallelujah. And let me tell you this, guys. You're not the only fish in the sea. Amen. 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 So don't grow weary. Don't die down. Don't abate. Don't become less intense. Don't you drop off. And don't you diminish. Because if you come weary in well to me, I tell Minister Paul Robinson, don't diminish. Because sometimes you can be around folk. Oh, God help me. They drop little stuff that they can see all along and it can discourage you. You know what I'm talking about? Because some of y'all, you're not as strong as you think you are. You're vulnerable. Because I'm going to talk to you today about a particular time. Yes. Charlie, I'm going to show you that in a day if I can turn your life and flip it upside down. Can I get some witness for you? But you've got to have some foundation. You've got to have some root. You can't just jump and be a fly by night. <laughs> because the Bible said seeds were planted in different soils. And some of them sprung up, shouted, ran, did everything, and then they fell by the wayside. Because they didn't stay long enough. They didn't sell themselves long enough. They didn't understand that you, you, you ain't ready. Yes. Yes. Tell me, are you going to go behind you feel? Amen. Do you understand that there's a devil out there that got something fit to make you fall? Yes. Yes. They just think they, they, they was. You stop all that negative self talk, too. Yes. Who are they? Name them. Say who they are. Yes. Don't say that. That's the wrong spirit. They, they, they. They who? Who are you talking about? Benevolent? Who are you talking about? They, they, the past. Who? Now they gonna help you. Who are they? Because if you name them, you're gonna find out where you're coming from. Who are they? Help me, God. Who are they? Help me, Jesus. Don't go weary. Don't die down. Don't sit and look and listen and pick up on folks' weaknesses. And then you stop doing what's good. Don't tell you that you weren't doing it for them anyway. You were doing it because you believed in what you were doing. You were riding here because you believed in doing it. So you don't need to get weary, become weary because you weren't doing it for folk. Shut up! You were doing it for the glory of God. You were doing it to bring honor. Somebody show yes, Lord, yes, Lord. to his name, yes. not to you. Amen. Did you sit and have folks dropping? Oh, I've been in this present company. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Because tomorrow about this time. Amen. Yes, God. Oh, bless you. Yes. Don't be diminished. Don't go back because you got to understand when you become... Becoming weary is a process. 
You're not weary, but you gotta be careful. Because some of you have not been this way before. You're going this way before and your joy is pure and good. But you don't understand, oh God, I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna teach the power of God. Lord have mercy. And you'll be surprised when they come. Oh, that's why you, oh God. Lord help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can't be weary, you can't be obedient. You can't look at folk because what they do. And look at my body. And sometimes folks don't have to say nothing. It's the stuff they give out vibes. You know, remember folks, they give out vibes. You don't have to say anything. Oh, help me when they give out vibes. You know how to do it. Hallelujah. When you're doing something for God, keep doing it. Because the main way we know it what God is when you stop. I'm not talking about all your good reasons. I'm just talking about in the middle of it. Becoming weary. Oh, help me, God. I'm almost there. Y'all with me? Yes, Pastor. Don't become co-asal. Uh, don't be reluctant. Don't stop and be reluctant to, to experience more of what God is doing. Uh, and that's different from having the zeal of God not according to knowledge. Uh, don't you get tired if you want to experience more of doing what's good. Uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, oh, God ain't going to help me. Uh, hallelujah. Don't you become weary. Uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, and look at some more. They didn't say the long time. How long they've been saying. Uh, they weary. But the Bible said, don't you become weary. Shout out to you. I told you about this big scripture. A prophet that died and a prophet that died. Yeah. Yeah. Become weary. Because when you become weary, your ears get messed up. And you, have, you start listening to stuff that's not wholesome. Oh Lord have mercy. And let me tell you this, if I can get into this, I don't have the time to treat this. It don't have to be a negative. You don't understand what's flattering and what's true. I'm not letting nobody, oh, help me God, put no label on me if I'm not doing it. Well, that's flattering. Amen. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Hallelujah. I am a pastor here and I pastor well. Yes, Hallelujah. That's my job. <laughs> that don't mean you're leaving the fight. Yes. Weariness is not, hallelujah. Anybody out there that's saying, Lord, what I'm talking about? Yes. Weariness is not getting out the will of God. Stay on the contrary. Yes. Hallelujah. Weariness is simply meaning I'm tired. Yes. I'm tired of mess. I'm tired of fixing stuff. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm tired. Come on, somebody. Come on, y'all hear me? The talking heads. Y'all know that I'm tired. Lord, I, mean, I can't get to the to, to call. I'm tired. I'm tired of turning the other cheek. I'm tired of apologizing. I'm tired of going the extra mile. I'm tired of helping folk that don't appreciate it. I'm tired of being lying. I'm tired of folk trying to underhand me. I'm tired. And I have to put my arms around the road and get away. I'm tired. That's weariness. Say, don't become weary. Oh, y'all ain't gonna let y'all help me helping me. Amen. So let's go today. We'll finish it somewhere. We're gonna do this on Second Kings right quick. Because you need to, I want you to tie this together. And I want to say this to you to everybody out there. You have a pastor here. I don't need a platform yeah. to exhibit my skills. I stand up here for 45 minutes on yeah. my feet and feel, you know I'm pretty good, right? Because I, I want you to get this. Yeah. And what I preach can make folk not like me. I know that. But I don't care. Because I love you, I want you to make it to heaven. Yes. Can I talk to y'all? Yes. Do you think I call prayer because I want to make y'all tired? Do you think that I call seven days because I want it's a practice of until I can yeah. see you get it? Do you think that's what I do? No. No. I call prayer because the prayer the only thing gonna save the church. Hallelujah! Yeah. Prayer's the only thing gonna keep us becoming worldly like everybody else. And prayer gonna keep us from trying to mix the world with holiness. Yeah. Yeah. 
called to go for it. Thank you. You're going to hate the one 
and love the other. Amen. But he's going to turn loose the one yeah. and embrace the other. Yeah. But about that day, <laughs> that's why I skipped it from about this time. And I'm reading from another um, testament shit, but it's about that time. Hallelujah. And I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I see what I'm doing. Please, Mark, I think it's the book of Mark, chapter number 13. It is a scripture that supports what I'm speaking about here today. So I jump from 2 Kings. So Mark 13, 32, let's go there. Then we'll go to 2 Kings. But about the day or the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So stay awake. Be on your guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. And that's the way our lives are to be lived. That way. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge and, and each with their, oh God, underline assigned task. Cause that's why we got all of this, 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 this oblivious. Oh help me God! Just, oh help me God! In your assigned task, everywhere, trying to be something that you're not. Just everywhere, all over. Stay in your assigned task. I am a woman of organization, and the reason why I'm a woman of organization is because I had to be. I have a have a siblings. Of organization. When you, you want to know something about your pastor? If I don't have a semblance of organization, then I'm very unhappy. It makes me very unhappy. I must have organization. If you come to my home, you have been with Michelle been there more than once. She knows exactly where everything goes. She said, Pastor, I said, exactly. If I get sick and can't talk, I can write it down and tell you about it. And when my beautiful people put it in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm just saying. Somebody said, ooh, I don't want to come to your west side. I said, you don't have to go here. You put it in the wrong place. Pass the way I tell you where to go. Ask me. Right. Yeah. I have to have it. And so is ministry. Yeah. I cannot and I will not deal with stuff all over the place. Yes, yes. I have to have a symbol because I give more honor to God yeah, yeah. than I give to myself. Yeah. I give more honor to God's house than I give to my little stuff. Yes, yes. And mother is intensified in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, God help me. Thank you. I hope y'all do. Yeah. Help me, God. Because everybody Let there be order in the house of the Lord. And let me tell you this. Let me do this. Because I tell folks all the time, Elder, this is the best, but now we're one of the best churches in the world. Yeah. You all hear me. And I will protect them. I will protect my people. Yes, yes I will. I will even protect you because this is one of the greatest churches in the world. If I hear anybody say anything else, you got a problem with me. Okay. I will rebuke and discipline, but that's my job. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't hear me. That's my job. And if it's coming from somewhere else, it ain't right. Bless your name, Jesus. It's one of the greatest churches in the world. And you are some of the greatest people in the world. And I love you. 
I'm going to preach to you. I'm going to rebuke you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to fast with you. I'm going to drag you to prayer every chance I get. And then I'm going to give you a little fish to eat to take the food. <laughs> and some of y'all better understand where you are. You're in a wealthy place. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shout, you're in a wealthy place. Yeah. I can get it out of the Let me get back into my own heart. Oh, that's not focus. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Let me, I pray, Lord. <laughs> let me finish. So, you do not know what time it will be. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back. You don't know whether it's in the evening. You don't know whether it's at midnight. You clubbing. You don't know when you're coming back. I'm just saying. You don't know when you're coming back. You don't know when he's coming back when you're having a long conversation. Come on. You don't know when you're coming back. So that's why we gotta stay prayerful so God can help us. You don't know when you're coming back and you got stuff in your heart. I mean, something you got, I hope it's not in here, but if you do, just got stuff in your heart. Hallelujah. And that stuff is covering everything you do. Some of us have been carrying stuff for a long time. You ain't God. You carry meanness. Come on, the hateful as you carry vengeance. But you but this is the right place to drop it. Yes. Tell you that it's drop it. Drop it. Leave it right here in the right here in prayer. Because you walk, when you walk out, it is dangerous for you to be, hallelujah, you can influence folks, you can mess them up. Can I get some help? You don't know who you are, you can, if you don't know who you are, who you are, you're messing people up. Can I get some help in here? And he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleep and say, wake up. Wake up. Come on, say, wake up. Wake up. Stay awake. Stay awake. And live. And now let's go to Kings. Hallelujah. Elisha, somebody the prophet Elisha, Elisha replied, he said, hear the words of the Lord. I'm not going to read a lot of it because I'm pushing for time. This is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow. <laughs> Tell somebody about this time tomorrow. Hallelujah. See a see a hallelujah, which is a measurement of the finest, not any kind of flower. Tell you, tell you that God loves his people so much. And can I say this to y'all? He's gonna give you the finest. Oh, yeah. Somebody said, well, I'm not able to afford whatever. Yes, you are. You don't even know what I'm talking about. You're looking at dollars and cents. God's gonna give you some finer things. When you lack, ain't none your designer stuff, he's gonna give you a designer design. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He'll give you the finer things in life as you walk with God. He wants you to have the finest. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let me tell you this. <laughs> now that I'm in those times that I couldn't afford, but I knew some stuff I could do, but whatever goes into this temple, uh, it's gonna be the finest. Yeah. Let me do what I do. Shout out to I don't need nobody's veins. I don't need nobody's feet. I don't need nobody's tail. I don't need their ears. I don't need their guts. I don't need their <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I just thought that was just fine. And he said, this is what's going to happen. The flower will sell for a ship. I don't want to bore you with this, but this is not boredom. And I want the church to move to a finer uh, frame of mind, that when the word of God is being read and you're not actually moving in another form of praise, because this right here is definitely worship. Let me say that again. When you read the word of God, this is definitely worship. And the greatest praise you can ever give God is by doing what's in here. So when you get bored or let nobody entertain you, you need to get some, you need to let God give you some finer stuff. This is the finest stuff you can get right here. Tell his words the finest of the finest. Help me, God. Because a lot of times, even our praise sometimes is just selfish. I want to get mine, and you ain't got time to help nobody else. Go help me. You don't care about nobody. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Really? 
And so we have here the bar here. And the officer on who's the arm of the king was leaning because tell me that she is going somewhere. Yeah. Said to the man of God, look, even if the Lord should open up the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? And the prophet Elisha said, this is not Elijah. Because you know, Elijah will blow you away in one will. This is Elisha, he's the most, he's pastoral. You will see it with your own eyes. But the answer to this year, but you will never, you will not eat any of it. Oh, bless you. Now, the four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate, they said to each other, so you see how the scene is changing? The scene is talking about that now it was a, there was a great famine in Samaria. It was so bad until they was eating pigeon, pigeon poop. I know it sounds bad, but they was eating pigeon poop and fighting over that. That's how bad it was. Somebody said, ooh, I can never. Let me say this, you can say that where you are and that's good, but never is when the situation changes. I have read what some of the finest people that was the plane crashed and they was over the remote places and they were starving to death. They ate bugs, they ate spiders, they ate protein, they, and they even ate some of the dead people that they were cut. It's true. They cut dead people to ate to keep to keep protein in their body so they could survive. So when we say, because we have not been exposed to that much. <laughs> so I said, I don't want to be here, and I don't either. <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> you got to know that there's another world that exists outside of your little world. You got to understand that there's greater things that God wants to do besides what you just want to do. You got to understand that there's a greater purpose Hallelujah for the church that just come in and shout at us being together. You got to understand, hallelujah, that the church is a machine. It's a great machine. It's a fine machine that operates. Everything got to be in its place so we can drive Satan out of places he would have never probably been able to be driven out. And we do it to these, these long range of old We do it together. Yeah. Sure, hallelujah. Yeah. Ministries come together. Yeah. Ministries complement each other. Uh, Am I helping anybody? Yeah. That's our mission as the church. Yeah. My min Your ministry means nothing if it's not in the mission of what God called the church to do. Yeah. He was licensed to be. Yeah. 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 Y
the Roman Empire proved that you can beg for money. And we're going to give you a beggar's coat so everybody know you're a professional beggar. They kicked him to the side of the road. What they didn't know, he heard Jesus was coming on that side right. of the road. <laughs> Shout out to you. That's our mission. Yeah. Hallelujah. They said to each other, why do we sit here? If we say we go into the sea, the famine is there, and if we will die, and if we say we don't stay here, we will die. He said, well, so let's get up and let's go over to the Iranians and surrender and see if they'll spare us. Now that's where that song comes from. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back. Stop going to the enemy's camp. How <laughs> is dangerous. You're not ready to go to the enemy's camp because he stole from you. I just told God, God, I don't, what? You talk to God, and I'm listening. 
I know when you talk to God, I don't expect nothing else from you. For right. you. Yeah. You're just going to be in my presence. Amen. That's all. They'll be gone. God, I don't know. You did that. I, I'm in the God. I don't know. What are you talking about? You're nuts. Crazy. You don't talk to God any kind of way. You can ask him a question, but you got to stay in your place when you pray. Because yeah. yeah. David understood. Remember, David got mad because God said, I'll kill you too. Hallelujah. And David got this little point right back into the promise. He ran. He said, Lord, what are we going to do now? You didn't kill the husband. He said, yeah, I'll do that because you didn't do it my way. He said, I'm going to kill you. You don't be careful. So you get back to the word of God. Go back in there and read the scripture. And let me tell you this. Some of y'all need to go back and reread the scripture. Some of y'all need to come back to Bible class and understand what the will of the Lord is. Because some of us don't know what God is doing. Yeah. If you don't pray, you don't know what God is doing. Right. You have to go back and reread it. You have to go back and say, oh, I see we did, yeah, we didn't do it the way God said do it. Yeah. You were just too excited. You wanted to shop. You wanted to show off your linen robes. Hallelujah. Yeah. You wanted to leave the great possessions. You wanted to be on top. He said, I didn't get no glory out of it. So I killed also because I will bring honor and glory to me. To my name. He said, I'll bring glory and honor to my name. Do y'all hear me today? This is very, very serious. He said, I'll do, I'll do what I need to do to bring glory to my name. I'll lay I'll let you in the hospital. I'll give you a diagnosis. Hallelujah. To bring glory to my name. Yeah. Shout yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. I let you stay in a test a longer than you wanted to stay. Yeah. I make you wait a little longer than you wanted to wait. Yeah. To bring glory to my name. Yeah. I will bring not only glory, I will bring honor. I'm going to get some honor out of you. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to let the world see that I'm a God is to be honored. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. You ain't going to mess up this time. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. You're going to bring honor to my name. Would you stay there? But I'm going to be there with you. And you got to remember I'm always with you. You just went ahead of me before. Oh, help me God. Am I helping anybody in here? Yes. So, Alicia, hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Hallelujah. Mark said it three or four times stay awake. And some of us were waiting, telling you, maybe God's going to do this. Day. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm resisting saying 24 hours because this day is not just 24 hours. Hallelujah. It's not this time tomorrow. Hallelujah. It means, hallelujah, it. <laughs> hallelujah in the Greek Hebrew. <laughs> it means because of circumstances. <laughs> circumstances will dictate the day. Yeah. Oh, help me God. Yeah. Circumstances, yeah. in the Hebrew. <laughs> Those statues would dictate. Well, Lord, I've been waiting. I ain't talking about your 10 years. I'm telling you that when I get ready, oh, help me, God. It will be by this time tomorrow, by this time, according to the circumstances, if you're ready to be blessed because of death, because of circumstances, because some of y'all ain't ready. So let me do He said, I can't gain honor.
that your life on hold. I'm waiting for God. God been blessing you. Get over it and move forward. Wait on what? Tell you, Lord, ain't no better than this. Shout hallelujah. Stay awake and stay alive. He said, we ain't gonna sit here and go to sleep. We're not gonna sit here and whine and, 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 and lick our wounds and talk about what should have been. <laughs> he said, we know the rule, we know the law. <laughs> he said, we're gonna stay right here. <laughs> and then the Bible says, yeah, but why should we sit here and die? If we're gonna die, let's die moving. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> if we're gonna live right, let's live right, cause another folk to be saved. <laughs> if you're gonna live right, let's do the right thing. <laughs> if you don't want to live right, that's your choice. <laughs> but don't play with it. Don't play with it, because you're losing time. Time is winding up. Hallelujah. God is about to crack the sky. God's coming back for his church. You can't play with this. Some of us have been playing for a long time. You can't play with this. I have respect for folk that have not made it in their mind. And they're waiting on God. God will do something for you today. Talking about folks, you in and out, in and out. You don't know whether you're going to do this or not. And some of y'all been doing it for a while, you still don't know. And I don't need nobody to come alongside you, speak to you either. I'm here to speak to me. Shout out to you. Thank you, Lord. So this you reply. Okay, he said, he said, but I'm going to tell you, he said, I'm prophesying now. And this should begin to prophesy. Seven when he said, a measured flower, fine. You won't be able to get this food. And it's gonna be six times more food than you could ever afford. He said, I will bring down the price so Mother Alice can get any prime steak she wants. Oh, he'll bless you that way. Oh, y'all laughing because y'all can understand some fine with me. Stop whining and crying about what you don't get. How did it make some stuff work? Yeah. Get your little phone out your only thing to do that and find some little warehouse and store the, the little use the same stuff that people just store. It's, it's just not fancy. Amen. Yeah, I find you know, found a good meat market and some little scrap. That's that same scrap that came out that's that big steak that we had is the same meat. It's just in scraps. We, 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 we sit and we want to think about it. And a lot of times we just want to do what somebody else is already doing. Lord help you, Jesus. He said, I'm going to bring the price down. And I was saying, Lord, I sure wish that you had him in the White House. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all need to catch that because some of y'all don't do nothing. Okay. Y'all need to catch that he didn't know what. I wish we had him in the White House. Yeah. So he could bring his information out. Yeah. And let me tell you this the same kind of, you can, it can be the same uh, item, but if the inflation is going to the interest is low, you can buy more house. And I, I got a 2.5. Yeah. I'm going nowhere. I got a 2.5. I can afford a lot of house. Now, you got a 7 point sign, you go figure. Right. <laughs> Amen. I think I'm using him. That's what's going on here. This is the economy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the economy. I'm not out of y'all, but you know, they all just economy is stupid. But this is the economy. Yeah. It's talking about money. Yeah. It's talking about living. Right. You're going to have to live after you shop. Yes. 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 Right. You're going to have to live after you spend your time. Yes. You can have a fine way of living if you learn what you can spend and what you can. I just help y'all to help y'all. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you this, I'm going to tell some of them, you know, I told them, I told them, this is the children told me so the church can be healthy when I die. Ain't nobody living forever. Ain't nobody living forever. I need some economy-minded, business-minded folk. All the serenading is fine, but when it's come time to pay the bills and you got to live, you got to know how to do this. And I'm convinced that a lot of times folks are nasty and mean and, and got a wrong spirit because stuff ain't going right in the economy in the home. Lord help you. So most of the time, nobody, 
trying to flip it out on God, he's called the, the king, the king of the blue shoes, the, the purple shoes. It goes deeper than that. Amen. Amen. So he told them this. He said, and he said, I want you to let you know, and I'm wrapping it up now because I am past. He said, man's extremity is God's opportunity. And God said, I'm going to take you to the strength. You will bring honor and glory to me. So I'm going to end this here because I can't do it justice, but I will next week. And I want you to say this week, say, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. Well, listen, it's written the day before. The day before. The day before. And that's what was happening here. The prophet prophesied. And they said, ain't no way God's going to do that in no one day. <laughs> that's what some of us think we didn't think. They said, no way God's going to do this. King said, that's what the king's, uh, that was the king's honor. You know, he was, had the king, the king was leaning on him, and he told the prophet, <laughs> he says, God will mock in God. Oh, God will make some windows in heaven. Oh, God will, oh, really, God, can you drop that faith? Oh, God will do that. Really, how long, how long you going to wait? God will do that. Be careful with mocking God. Amen. Be careful. He said, you know what God's going to do? He said that you will never eat of it. He said, because you're going to die from the food. You're going to die before you're not getting any of it. And I'm going to help you next week. They trampled him. They were so hard, big brother. <laughs> kind of like us and us. <laughs> they stampeded. They, they killed him. They stampeded and crushed him to death. And let me tell you this. When, you, when the prophecy is there, it will come to pass. All this other stuff is a country. I ain't got time for all of that. Did you hear the prophet? I heard the prophet I heard the word of God. I heard the book. Okay, because I'm not a group. I'm going to run out the folk. Do y'all hear me? Because I got God in me. Shout out to me. I got the Holy Ghost. Shout out to me. And the fire to me. And I don't run out the the, the, the after me. Y'all know me. Sports, but we're not going to be jumping on this. This time tomorrow. How many have something that you're contemplating for tomorrow? Amen. Tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow is a new day. This is the first of the week today. So we come Monday to the fourth of the first week. What? I ask you, as in, what do you want God to do for you? As, we, as I close here, what do you want Him to do for you? What, area, what, what have you been thinking about? Do not take this opportunity to ask for natural stuff. Yes. This is a spiritual time. What do you want God to do? You don't have to tell anybody. Just think it in your mind. Think it in your heart. And this time, tomorrow, in one day, God switch a great thing. Yes. In one day. Because God knows how to coordinate your life. When we look at it, there's no way he can do this. He said, but I'm God. <laughs> and God took four unclean men. Somebody had you beat them in the south for themselves. They did. So we're not going to sit here now. We're going to get up and do something. We died and we're not doing something. They went into the camp. And what God did for them to do for them, I want him to do for us. <laughs> But I was saying that even their footsteps was intensified. When they were ignored in society, they, they walked heavy in the Syrians camp. And they thought it was an army coming. God made four sick leprous men sound like a mighty army. And God messed with them. God will mess with your enemy. God will, God will mess with your enemy's mind to bring them all of his hands. He'll mess with their mind. And they begin to heal an army. And it was just four lepers that were sick and had been pushed aside. They refused to die sick. The Bible said that now is well. They ain't going. I don't know. They said, we better eat now. But what I love, and I want y'all to listen.
Because I, I just, I'm going on about 10, 15 minutes. So you ain't going to be able to fool. This is what I want to do. They, Michelle, they came to, to the spiritual part of him. They wanted to do the right thing. And sometimes, even for us, we don't come to that conclusion when we, when we, when we in a bad situation. They said, we came to this. Off the basis we want to be. He said, we came to this. How many times have we ever been with each other and stuff going on? Somebody said, we can't do this. We can't talk about this. We can't go over and then my assignments like this. Well, the nights and visits, the least that you would think that would be able to stay within the they said we can't, but they treated them so. They was outside the city, so you know they was going to have friends for the little food that they did, and they threw it over the wall. But they said, we can't do this. Because other folk, even though they took it's not, you got to stop always thinking about you. It's frustrating to ministry.
I say this to you. When you get into heaven, go to the one who comes. You call it your friend. And some of us just got certain folks we just lost him. Sometimes you need to just go there and do the word of God. See what God has to say. Because this time tomorrow, you're going to find out some I said, what is Pastor said? Listen, what is the Spirit telling me? You're going to teach over me this time tomorrow. There's some things I need to know I'm going to know. How many believe that? Anybody here believe what the, how many believe that this time tomorrow that you'll know some stuff that you didn't know? How many? Let me feel some stuff in this time tomorrow that you didn't know. Let me feel some stuff that you didn't know. Let me feel some stuff that you didn't know. This time tomorrow, God's going to release that thing that you got before Him because it's in the will of God. Sell yourself. You only get one chance at life. Yes. And all of us got an expiration date. All of us got, it, it says, better used by work before the day is over. All of us got, stop putting your bike on, stop waiting for your truck or your car or your ship and boat to come in. I'm productive thinking you do nothing. Get up. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Somebody say, that it's time tomorrow. Time Yeah. 